today I'm in a temple in Korat. You can see the temple style buildings here. A big bell tower there, more temple style buildings. Gates over there and a huge temple building there that's all tiled. Wat Praya. And this is a royal temple, but I have not come to show you the temple at all because although it is big and impressive, it's just a standard temple. If you want to see something like that, there's hundreds of them everywhere, every town. What I've come to show you is something a little bit different. And this sign here, getting overgrown, is giving it away. Cave. I'm taking you to see a cave temple in the middle of Karat town and bang in the middle. We are right next to the moat. We are right next to Suan Rak Park, Love Park. So you know exactly where we are. And here we go. We're going to disappear into a dark cave with a lot of stalactites hanging down. It really feels like you're walking into a cave. And when you walk in, it really has a cave feel. A lot of work has gone into doing this. It's got a big polished kind of marble style floor. Looks nice. But it's just up here. It's all these stalactites hanging off the ceiling. I mean, it's not 100% realistic. You can see the concrete in between. So they've built a concrete shell and they've stuck these into it. But it's just not what you'd expect in Karat Town Center. It's very peaceful. The pillars have been all decorated up and you can see all this sparkling stone here. And what's interesting, there's so many different types here. This long thin one is like all crystal style hanging down. This looks amazing. I mean, this looks like something out of an Indiana Jones movie. And here we have loads more, lots of different types all around. It's all different types. And on ledges perched everywhere, we can see Buddhas, seated Buddhas, praying Buddhas. Here we just got a Buddha's head here as well. But it's up there that's the interesting bit. You look up and you really feel like you've gone to a cave somewhere out in the mountains, but you're actually right bang in Karat town center. That's really impressive. And we've got another pillar here completely encrusted with shiny crystal style. I've got an old picture of the monks here. And under here, I guess these are the valuable ones. They've got all these on display. We can see some green here as well. A lot of different types going on here. And apparently some of these Buddhas that have been donated to the temple, they're up to 300 years old. And then there's two main shrines. One area we've got the usual sort of reclining Buddha and everything's coming down and blending behind him. And here we have got a lot of statues. We've got a big seated Buddha here that looks absolutely spanking new. Got a lot of statues here and again, loads more stalactites. And this one's quite interesting because here we've got four standing statues and the heads have all disappeared. This one's a little bit different style because it's actually made of wood. So that's kind of different to everything else in here, but it's very, very impressive. And here we've got a big shelf with Buddha statues here. And they've only got price tags on them. So you can probably come here and you can make a donation to what these guys are doing. There isn't really a big romantic story to this cave temple, to be honest, although there's a few myths out there on the internet. But the story is basically the chief monk of this temple complex he saw that there was a lot of new quarrying going on in Saraburi. That's about 100 kilometers away to the west. And they were blowing up and digging their way through a lot of historic caves. And the locals were selling off the stalactites and all those kind of things. So he went down there and he chose a few as decorations because in Thailand, you decorate your temple like anything. But clearly he had the whole collector thing going on. So he's going back and back and buying more and more and different styles. And then he had a big collection and a big display area. And then at some point he had the idea, let's recreate a little cave in here. And that's what happened. So not really a great romantic story, but pretty cool. Guy obviously liked stalactites. He liked those kind of things to decorate his temple. And it got a bit out of control. And then he's built this. And if we step back slightly, you can see the ground floor has all the cave effect. But as soon as you go up the second floor and the third floor, it's just all the standard wooden and concrete style. And it's just a facade on the front as well, because if we sneak down the side, 
again you can see it's a stock building so it's definitely a very very fake cave temple but it's quite cool so we're going to leave the cave temple behind and i'm just going to show you this main building because it does have some unusual characteristics that set it apart from other temples as well as having a lot of like objects on plinths all around it but if you see the curvature in the stonework there and you can see the window ledges are curved and you can see how it's all curved up and the idea is to create the feeling of a ship and a feeling that the temple is floating it's quite an unusual effect and you can see it's all been designed to give a little bit of a feel of an old ship and the whole temple just sitting there just floating away and in the garden here we've got a lot of stones on plinths we've got statues got kind of quite a lot going on here as well so there's actually a little bit more to see here than just the cave and again here we've got old statues rocks so clearly the monk who's run this place he's liked rocks he's liked stones he's like stalactites and here's some very unusual rock formations sitting here as well and here in the corner is a boaty tree which a sign tells me was shipped in from India. So the next unusual thing about this temple is the doors. They are not rectangular, they are trapezoid in shape. That's very unusual. And you can see the open doorway here, the very clearly the shape, the doorway I've just walked through, and also these windows on the end, the same trapezoid shape. So again, it's kind of building the whole feel of a boat. So I just had to have a quick walk into the building because one, it's cool. But two, I need to see what's in here. And there's a big gold Buddha on a red backdrop with a lot of figurines built into it. And on the back wall, actually, we have a load more pictures of different monks. There's also quite an unusual style temple building right inside the gate. It looks like it's got 10 sides and a chedi on top. And it actually looks maybe like that's the living quarters. It gives the vibe of that. So it's bye bye with Wat Paya. I struggle a bit with this video because we're in the really hot summer here. It's over 40, it's like 42 degrees at the moment and I am absolutely burning completely. But this temple is very conveniently located and you can see as soon as I walk a few meters away, Sadi Kab, as soon as I walk a few meters away, we've got clothing stalls and we have a coffee shop and I'm going to stop there and get coffee and cool down because I am absolutely boiling. So that's it for this video. Quick look around this temple. It's just something unique, something unusual, something a little bit on the different side. I'm stopping here to drink cold coffee now and cool off because it's crazy the heat today. And this little soy coffee shop is about 10 meters from the entrance so it's very handy and it really is slow life i had to like shout at the woman and then someone came out of the back well i didn't shout at her i shouted and then someone came out of the back she made me coffee and she's gone away again quite a slow pace of life in they're not expecting a big rush of customers despite it being 40 plus degrees